There are places built with blueprints and tools, and there are others, rarer, that are also built with anecdotes, invisible challenges, and the decisions of people who didn't know they were making history. The Garabit Viaduct, suspended like a red line over the valleys of southern France, belongs to the second group. To understand this bridge, it's not enough to observe it, you have to walk through the stories it holds, as if each rivet hid a secret, as if every arch were a chapter in a never-ending novel. From a distance, the viaduct looks delicate, almost too graceful for its scale. But up close, you see the precision of its construction, the confidence of each joint. In 1878, a young engineer walked alone through a mountainous stretch of the Truyère Valley. In his pocket, he carried a letter, and in his mind, an idea that seemed outrageous. To build a bridge floating more than 120 meters above the river without yielding to the wind. That engineer was Léon Boyer, still unknown, but full of intuition. The letter was addressed to a man who was already becoming a legend, Gustave Eiffel. Boyer signed it with trembling hands, not because of the cold, but because what he proposed was bold. An iron arch spanning 165 meters, supported by steel pillars defying the terrain. Eiffel said yes, and that's how the story began. Eiffel had an obsession, curved efficiency. His team traced a parabola so perfect that it was said if you drew it on paper, the bridge could hold itself up without bolts. At its peak, the viaduct would span 565 meters in length, pure mathematical elegance. Each part was prefabricated and later assembled on site, like a Swiss watch suspended in the air. Over 3,200 tons of iron were pieced together in silence, as if the mountain itself respected what was being built there. But behind that silence was the strain of thousands of hands and minds. Workers braved frost and fatigue, hanging from dizzying heights with little more than ropes and courage. Each bolt tightened was a moment of risk. Each beam hoisted a challenge of balance and trust. The viaduct didn't just rise from engineering, it rose from effort, fear, and human perseverance. For months, locals watched the arch rise toward the void, wondering if it would ever close, or if it would all collapse into the river. There's a story still told in Ruins or Marguerite. On the day the final rivet was driven into the main arch, the one that would unite both halves, everyone fell silent. Not a word was spoken, only the sound of a hammer, one strike, and then nothing. And then someone, a child they say, shouted, it didn't fall, and the valley erupted in applause. It was 1884. Two years later, for the first time, a train crossed the viaduct. No one dared breathe at first. Then everyone looked down. The river was still there, untouched, as if it too admired the structure. But even after that triumphant moment, the bridge continued to evolve in meaning. Its presence didn't just link two sides of a valley, it started linking generations. Engineers, architects, travelers, all carried away by the same sense of wonder. Some returned decades later, just to confirm it still stands. Others arrived for the first time, seeking inspiration in its silent grandeur. Why is it red? They say, Eiffel chose that color not to compete with nature, but to frame it. Vermilion red, vibrant, not trying to blend in. On the contrary, it carves itself into the landscape like a signature, like a poem that refuses to hide. Painting it isn't simple, more than 50,000 square meters of metal surface must be covered, and maintenance is done every 20 years. Sometimes, in the coldest winters, snow drapes over its curves like a sculpture under a white sheet. But even then, the viaduct remains an iron bird in full flight. Today, the trains that cross Garabit don't rush. Speed is limited out of respect, no more than 60 kilometers per hour, not out of weakness, but out of solemnity. Because even now, nearly 140 years later, the bridge is not routine. It is ritual. Tourists photograph it from below. Engineers study it as a reference, and writers, like me, walk it with words, trying to explain what may not need explanation. The beauty of the impossible, made real. Each of these little stories forms part of something greater, a structure that defied its time and still stands today, not just because of its design, but because it was built with imagination, risk, and silence. The Garabit Viaduct is not just a path between two mountains, it is a raised timeline, a suspended memory, a metallic breath in the shape of an arch, and like any good story, it stands on its own.